this communication. Okay, so now let me give uh, some kind of very uh, so um, a small overview about the topic of business communication. What is communication nowadays for business? Uh, we all agree that uh, nowadays business communication and uh, so business English has become a kind of very a powerful tool for any international business events, even international academic business, even uh, not only business related to business. So it's a kind of a, uh, so very important trend in the globalized uh, world. At the same time, English is a lingua franca, uh, the common language for global citizens, not only for the, it's a, it's a kind of language, not only for the international English business, but also for all kinds of communication, which is held worldwide via English as a lingua franca. So this is very important for us once again to highlight. At the same time, uh, you know, uh, as a result of uh, uh, attending various events uh, together with my colleague Lucina, uh, organized by ITEF, a special interest group of Business English, we discovered that nowadays, not only we have ELF, but at the same time, there is a very interesting trend of emergence of BELF. <laughs> Business English as a lingua franca. English as a, so business English as a lingua franca is similar to ELF, lingua franca, but at the same time, it refers to the usage of English as a shared language by speakers of different mother tongues in, uh, during interpersonal encounters and during maybe so, uh, socializing events. But both concepts are very much ontologically distinct from English as a native language. We should once again remember because when we are teaching business English and business communication, this must be all the time kind of taken into account. Uh, but uh, what sets apart uh, BELF from ELF? Yes, it is a kind of question which is a kind of very often nowadays, very uh, so very often raised in our discussions. First of all, business ELF reflects three key contextual features. First of all, its domain, it's a of usage of global English because nowadays, especially during pandemic and also maybe at the end of pandemic, we are still living in a globalized world. At the same time, there is another factor, the role of its users, business professionals, academics, and all kinds of uh, professional fields and overall goal of interactions and socializing or networking, getting the job done. Business as usual is now, of course, done as a result of business English. So that's why business communication in English so matters more than ever. So these features are closely intertwined with business knowledge, which functions as a common frame of reference, uh, which at the same time simplifies uh, the fact that uh, communication among internationally operating professionals uh, must be crystal clear. This is very important for us. And when we talk about uh, so communication for business, once again, uh, we often raise this question, which I'm going to also raise in the form of uh, a very small chat, a poll in the chat, uh, which uh, so form of communication is more preferred in business when we uh, for communicate for business in a written form or uh, orally, like uh, maybe verbally or non-verbally, it doesn't matter. In such cases, communicator must weigh a kind of assess, evaluate what are advantages and disadvantages of each type of communication in order to make reasonable choice between them. That's why when teaching business English or business communication, we need to kind of, uh, once again, teach our learners uh, uh, which type of communication can be uh, more or less preferred in one or certain situation. That's why when we, uh, at the same time, uh, so uh, talk about the situation, uh, of course, uh, sometimes the choice can be made as a result of um, a different type of uh, so, uh, so situations. But still, I would like to ask you very kindly to go to the poll but I am going to um, actually give the link in the chat. If you give me uh, one second, please uh, give me one second. I'm going to once again uh, put, uh, because I need to uh, stop sharing. So now here, here I go. So because I already copied it, but as there is webinar was a kind of delayed. So I could not, it could not be saved. Let me put the question in the chat. I hope you say it, say it in one second. And thank you for your patience. Now it's, here we go. And please take your time and please answer your poll, this poll about, uh, which is a kind of uh, maybe very simple question, but say, uh, the poll asks which type of communication uh, so should be boosted 
both oral, written, or both in while teaching business English. And after at the end of the webinar, I will check once again your uh, so preferences. Okay. So uh, let, let's uh, continue. So, and once again, when we talk about advantages, uh, disadvantages of each type of uh, so communication style, uh, advantage of oral over written communication is that it's a complete interchange of thoughts and ideas. Uh, and of course it takes place faster because nowadays we, we time is money. We know that everyone, we all as business visual people, and it doesn't matter whether, whether these people are in, engaged in a business, of course, it's related to money making. Even with uh, people engage in academy, we want to get uh, immediate results. That's why, in this case, uh, maybe in this situation, uh, preference can be given to so oral communication. But in return, this can a little bit result in a wasted uh, efforts of costly errors. Whereas in business, time is money, and written communication also definitely has advantages. They are all uh, definitely uh, very important uh, in order to archivize um, so correspondence and in order to kind of to use as a evidence and proof. That's why, of course, in business, uh, idea of uh, effective business communication and written communication is, of course, cannot be underestimated. I think that they are both equally important. That's why when teaching business English or business communication, it's important to boost both the skills more or less equally. And once again, let's, uh, uh, let's um, so try to and so I think about this question, what is the main purpose of business English or business communication? Uh, first of all, it's a purposeful or specific tool. Uh, and at the same time, central goal of business English is to carry the message. Uh, and at the same time, of course, we, why do we, uh, so why do business people uh, submit in order to reach a deal? So this is very important. And at the same time, this is why it demands a business oriented English vocabulary and bunch of skills. This is very important for us when we talk about business English. And uh, how, uh, once again, uh, when we, uh, let's return to the kind of um, uh, some uh, pandemic situation because it's still not over, as we see, and still we are doing uh, lots of uh, so meetings, webinars uh, virtually. But still, how has pandemic uh, kind of reshaped business English instruction? For them, in my reality, I, as I have mentioned already, for them, I gave 72-hour business communication class in Kazakhstan virtually. So this means that it definitely I had to reshape my instructions. I had to reshape materials. I had to, had to redesign, yes, my teaching style. But of course, business English instruction has become a little bit less centralized and more global. So this is a kind of my example uh, with more learners seeking spots in online classes and increasing the usage of digital materials. And several months into the COVID pandemic, the shock of shelter in place mandates, of course, had worn down, and this is when education institutions saw a kind of very uh, so uh, vivid and evident interest from individuals to corporations rise. So at the same time, when we talk about um, uh, so uh, diversification of business English classes, and not only business English classes, uh, because uh, uh, with authentic materials, uh, we should all the time uh, so remember and take into account that uh, one of the most challenging tasks, which is faced uh, by ESP uh, educators. This is how to boost, how to develop interest around search topics through, uh, in, in our case, authentic materials in order to motivate for learner, uh, for our learners for better acquisition of specialized language. At the same time, once again, let me very kindly remind you because I also gave uh, two webinars before, which was also a little bit related to authentic materials that these materials are definitely related from uh, real life situations. And that's why business English teachers need, uh, and indeed they have a large amount of materials available uh, so nowadays online and uh, maybe uh, so uh, they can be also available in a material manner but uh, so it's very important for us to once again remember that this can be very important uh, strategies uh, in order to deal with the real life situation and with the real language once again now we agree that it's very uh, kind of effective to use and to integrate authentic materials in all these three classes and but of course in our case in business English classes. And once again, uh, if we kind of go to the definition of uh, authentic materials provided by 
no noun and mila. They were not created or edited expressly for language learners. Authentic materials illustrate how English is used naturally by native speakers. And commonly used daily objects can be categorized as authentic materials, which can be very effectively, once again, used in all not only in general English, but of course in ESP uh, teaching or learning experiences. Uh, as for the categories of authentic materials, once again, they are not limited to only uh, so uh, very maybe widely uh, so and very commonly used. Uh, so uh, if you say like uh, uh, bank brochures, receipts, these are daily use objects, even reports, financial statements, application forms, emails. Emails can be very nice authentic materials. And I often uh, share uh, among my students my business emails in order to kind of show them how to construct uh, so um, uh, proper emails in English, of course, and uh, broader authentic materials. So they are represented by newspaper articles, journals, TV and radio broadcasts, podcasts maybe on business uh, topics, TEDx talks, documentaries, internet website, general and special literature, lots of. And last and not, not least, these are easily accessible websites uh, these are actually mostly related to uh, some specialized publications in the field of, uh, uh, so maybe business, uh, statistics at the same time, surveys and reference, why not? These are all types of authentic materials, but of course we need to, uh, so we need to choose most appropriate ones for our uh, so learners according to the interest, according to the level, and according to the, of course, um, according to our time constraints, because, uh, you know, integrating authentic materials requires from us going beyond class, uh, so textbooks. So this means that uh, in the universities in which I'm teaching, uh, we are a little bit too much, so dependent on the syllabus because we need to cover all the topics, but sometimes we can be go beyond the textbooks and in this case, we should not be a kind of uh, so confused by versatility factor uh, as sometimes uh, we need to choose most appropriate one audiovisual or this can be either written one, which can be very effectively integrated in to our classroom. So, uh, and when talking about the factor of versatility, it's uh, at the same time uh, crystal clear that uh, maybe based on my, maybe I, I don't want to sound biased, but I one of my favorite authentic materials, which I use not only in business English classroom, but also in legal English in other ESP classroom, as these are newspaper articles. But of course, uh, in business English classroom, we can be using uh, both, of course, like uh, uh, audiovisuals ones. But why, uh, as, as I know, lots of my colleagues also at my university, uh, they prefer and they do in case so integrate lots of newspaper articles and why first of all business english teachers they are naturally attracted to authentic materials such as written text and or maybe this can be recorded with videos uh, maybe ted talks uh, and shows stand up comedy programs maybe not all not in uh, this classroom but emails and blogs but what is the reason first of all why articles this is a question which i really would like to be kind of answering uh, topical stories nowadays they are a great resource of teaching materials materials because they present different ways of uh, so maybe update information and then they definitely raise uh, uh, students engagement and participation participation, uh, so which we really would like to uh, so receive at the end of the class. Uh, at the same time, so authentic materials and when they are incorporated in business communication or business, uh, so uh, English class, uh, this need to be very much relevant to the topics uh, which are actually covered within the curriculum. So this can be topics related to the how to develop effective business correspondence, how to, uh, this is of course written communication, business communication, how to at the same time vocabulary for professional purposes. This can be very, 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 maybe effectively even developed uh, with uh, so newspaper articles, why not? So report writing, uh, proposal writing, business vocabulary, informal networking. This can be very much also very effectively taught with, with TED Talks. Uh, and at the same time, so negotiations. This is also very, but and very powerful uh, tool of communication. But what to do, how to do, and when to do. 
Of course, we should all the time maybe ask us, uh, each other as a teachers, instructors. There are many, many uh, types of, of course, uh, uh, resources. But why is it important to read business English articles? First of all, as we read articles, as even we as teachers, uh, we maybe uh, maybe uh, we might even be the first person in our office to learn of a new practice. Uh, maybe at the same time, trend or technology in our industry. But with the knowledge which we gain regularly reading business articles, we can definitely impress our bosses, maybe our colleagues, and feel comfortable striking up a conversation with native speaker. This can be very uh, a very good benefit. At the same time, there are a lot of popular English business article resources uh, and which can be very effectively used. Uh, but of course, all of these resources, I cannot be telling you that I am using all of them, but maybe depending on the time and constraints, we can pick up. First of all, this is ESL, ESL Gold. Uh, this resource specializes in money and finance, and this can be very, for example, right now, I am kind of working on the syllabus about business for economy students. So in this case, the topics of money, economy, maybe Lucina will agree with me, this can be very much uh, so used from this website. And we can read article about personal loans or something more widely such related to the credit cards. So this is one of the results. Another one, one is why um, English. So this is an excellent news outlet for ESL readers. See, each article is accompanied by audio recording, as we see. So students get both. Uh, so at the same time, so exposure to so uh, to, imp to improve uh, so written communication at the same time receptive skills, uh, but at the same time, so uh, so they can also uh, get a very nice opportunity to uh, boost their um, productive skills such as speaking. So another very important and very interesting resource, authentic English business articles. This is News in Levels. News in Levels promotes itself as a provider of world news. Uh, and uh, this website provides pages and pages of news articles. Uh, and uh, one of the great features of this site is that each article has three levels. So according to our students' level, we can so, uh, adjust to our learners' needs. So this can be a very practical and useful activity and source, uh, once again, for our students. Another uh, very interesting one, this is also Simple English News. Uh, and we, are, uh, we can have a section of business section with over 150 relevant and current articles. Articles. Yes, if we even go to this section. So this can be also applied in our business English class. So another, so sources are actually mostly uh, so uh, so is uh, so articles from English magazines. Uh, this online magazine, uh, which is mostly used uh, and for uh, among ESL students, but it covers the topics from uh, from different uh, recent events related to the smart business practices. Yes, because nowadays smart business practices is very common, and that's why it also includes audio so audio components. So we are actually also uh, so boosting students' listening skills. In our case, uh, so receptive one. Uh, another one is also business English site. Here we can find a selection of business articles on topics from iPhones to our producer. These articles are also uh, kind of specifically designed to test our student knowledge uh, and each article company bidding comprehension. So as we see, even there is a ready-made uh, so activities uh, accompanying the, the resource, which can be very uh, so, uh, so uh, very good idea for us in order to save our time. Uh, so in other articles, these are breaking news and lingua, which I would like to focus on. Uh, on this side, we can uh, find articles divided into several business categories, such as customer service, communication, and finance. Each article is very general, very informative, and they are uh, accompanied by exercises, once again, uh, which uh, kind of gives us a lesser headache and uh, so prevents us from uh, indiv so individually redesigning activities uh, for our uh, so, uh, class. Uh, at the same time, when we talk about uh, another uh, resource, which is very popular one, this is Wall Street Journal. This is a kind of business section. It also has business section. I also use Guardian with business section and law section as well in my legal English class, but still it shows very good uh, so choice and uh, assortment of business news. And we can also find breaking news um, uh, from different uh, categories of management to careers of tech. Uh, 
So as we see, and at the same time, we can also uh, subscribe to it. And Forbes also, uh, also provides articles on all types of latest news in the world of business. And topics, of course, include money, uh, industry leadership, and innovation. And we can, of course, access free of charge, which is very good solution. And more business is a kind of online and other useful resource for articles on a variety of business-related topic. And these articles are not necessarily current, but they are great way to learn about general business topics and concepts in English. And they are uh, at the same time accompanied by glossary, and which is very important if by English language definitions and key vocabulary words for, you, for students to study. And uh, so last and not least, this is, is Bloomberg, which is another famous business news resource and uh, where, we can, where we can find uh, maybe like a, a couple of a few articles uh, free to, uh, so without uh, so subscribing, without uh, so getting paid. And Yahoo Business also reports also, also shows us everything from stocks to buy-ons or to property dealings, which can be very nice, again, for economy students, because I also teach the students of economy and business. So that's why we, we have to vary our topics accordingly. And economy is one of my favorite so news resource, this is another leading English language authority in the business, which provides relevant articles on all the topic of business story. And Harvard Business Review, uh, this is American perspective. Uh, 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 at the same time, it, it, it publishes and posts articles related to human resource management, self-management, work-life balance, very interesting topics. And it, uh, so at the same time, this can be very interesting depending on our, uh, so so maybe a topic. And now, as we see, uh, there are lots of resources. And at the same time, these resources gave us a lot of headache at the same time. But how to, what strategies can we use in order to effectively introduce and put into practice these resources in our class? Okay, first of all, active reading. This can be very effective strategies, which involves focus reading techniques. And at the same time, uh, when reading business English articles, it's a good idea to read the article twice. So here we, we can call also, we can use skimming and scanning technique, reading for the main idea, and of course, reading for the details. And here, uh, the first reading uh, article gives us general understanding uh, uh, about um, uh, the article, about the topic, about the situation, about the news. And at the same time, uh, if you can read, uh, so maybe you can find a friend, colleague, or teacher who is willing to read the article too. And after you both read the article, we can discuss it. And uh, at the same time, this discussion also can lead to kind of maybe uh, ambiguity and uh, maybe controversial opinion whether it is really useful article. Uh, so, but at the same time, uh, maybe even making students discuss this article, yes, this at the same time can, uh, of course, help our students to boost their productive or speaking skills. So this can be very good. So killing one bird, yes, with one shot, the two birds with one shot. So at the same time, I'm going to present and uh, a couple of maybe not more than two articles in today's uh, uh, webinar, uh, which I have been using during pandemic and beyond uh, in order to diversify uh, my class and once again, engage our learners. We are somehow all the time maybe highlighting the fact, but you, you know, somehow our students need to be engaged with, and how can we engage if uh, without, um, uh, so maybe, um, so uh, sharing up-to-date information and which can be applicable in the lifestyle. So one of the uh, pictures uh, which I use from the article about uh, from the very beginning of COVID-19 pandemic, this was um, related to the economic uh, crisis of recession. We all remember recession, uh, streets of maybe even most uh, pop so popular tourist destination, Italy, one of my favorite ones, of course, and of course, even my city, which was uh, so without any tourists. And uh, as we see, Duomo of Milan, this was um, uh, so one of the mm, headlines, uh, so which was uh, so also uh, used in my classroom. And students were kind of asked to predict the articles through pictures. And the world before pandemic Spanish steps in Rome and after pandemic. As we see, students were given some similar maybe situations. And after this, students were kindly asked to maybe uh, so uh, predict the. Uh, potential topic of today's uh, so article. Yes, authentic material. Uh, at the same time, it generated their interest. And of course, it uh, I actually 
actually prepared uh, students uh, for uh, the topic which I was going to cover during the like uh, uh, class. So and the, then I of course students were given the title, uh, so headline itself: the world after coronavirus, the storm will pass, but the choices we make now could change our lives for years to come. So and of course now even this article can be also used now, and we also see uh, how much we were influenced by pandemic and we are still under its influence. So the world really has changed, but still we are now returning to the uh, it's old normal. So, but still, we, now we have new normal, which is hybrid reality. Still, now conferences, big gatherings, they are uh, held in a hybrid manner. Even in my university, uh, academic years this year, so this term will be uh, completed in a hybrid mode. So, this means that still we are under uh, some COVID 19 pandemic, so influence. Another article, another picture which I gave uh, to my students in order to diversify and in order to kind of boost and develop and to kind of provoke the imaginative skills. This was a picture about this uh, Turkish, uh, I think, Grand Bazaar. Everyone can very easily. And they were kind of asked, what does this picture suggest? OK, and uh, of course, another stage was uh, to give the headline title uh, story, Turkish replaces Central Bank head as leader sees record loss. And, uh, and this was the article from 2020. Um, I think it's an early beginning, second wave of pandemic. And people walk inside the historical uh, bazaar, one of the homes exchange offices of Istanbul, and Turkish currency tumbled Father Friday, hitting another record law. So, uh, so I'm not going to read the detail, but here I mostly focus students' interest, so attention on specific vocabulary. And I, I will show you uh, the text with highlighted, you know, phrases, which are very much related to the uh, terms related to economic crisis, recession, like the boost the economy, interest rate, inflation rate, Yes, devil's triangle, yeah. So economic woes of foreign powers, etc. And this, believe me, was very, uh, very interesting article uh, in uh, which also uh, allowed me to plan the lesson uh, activities for um, pre-reading stage, for during reading stage, and for post-reading. So I covered all this uh, three PP principle present okay, so presented article, so the topic, so practice it with students, and at the same time uh, we uh, finalize it with the production stage uh, and. So, so this is a kind of example illustration which shows that nowadays, uh, at the same time, uh, these are articles uh, which uh, uh, not only uh, so uh, develop students, uh, I have to say, receptive and productive skills. Uh, so they are reading, maybe they are listening, but at the same time, it uh, teaches our it, uh, our students how to uh, produce, how to practice language, uh, and how to maybe uh, so write business reports, maybe business letters, emails as a result of uh, giving these different types of topic. Another article, which was also used during uh, uh, in the first wave of pandemic, 2020, July 23rd, this was um, uh, about Australia's uh, governments, uh, so, uh, which, uh, which, uh, so which cost like uh, um, almost one, uh, 131 billion. And as we see, students were given uh, after predicting the, the situation, uh, forecasting the maybe potential topic. Uh, so students were given first paragraph. Uh, and um, yeah, so we, also, we so sometimes I also all, all the time love using journalist principle. So uh, because we, we know that uh, uh, so um, representatives of the media, uh, media they often love uh, so questions, asking questions, which at the same time, uh, so um, develop students' uh, critical thinking. And students were given uh, this first paragraph and ask, uh, kindly asked to answer five WH journalist questions, yes, around this topic. And as you see from the lesson plan, which I uh, so actually used for this article, uh, first of all, it was uh, mostly allocated uh, 60 minutes. And uh, uh, one of the topic was uh, economic profile of the country uh, from the course book. And um, the main focus was made on budgeting, on recession, and um, business language uh, focus, which was made, this was a language associated with the budgeting and economic state of the country. 
and in this, this uh, lesson students uh, kind of uh, read article uh, from business article uh, published in Associated Press and they at the same time work on the language and understand uh, for general comprehension and also they talk, produce language, uh, so around the topic. And at the same time, they learned they mastered business English idioms related to the topic and they also discussed. So as we see within the lesson, we also covered all three stages, presentation, practice and production. As you see, this is a lesson plan and these are the highlighted words. And maybe you see, maybe it's too uh, very little, a little bit, uh, maybe not comfortable, but so this is the authentic material which was used uh, in one of my business English classes. <clears throat> And let me give you maybe a little bit uh, stages. Stage number one, this was warmer stage. As we see, it generates a, a curiosity. It generates interest around the student. Uh, so topic and students are kind of, I uh, kindly ask to look at the picture and try to predict. Uh, what is the article going to be about? As you see, there are some kind of maybe so uh, fragments from the interview. Uh, maybe they can see the logo. They can identify which country is it, etc. So this was a warmer up stage. After which was a, a, a so at the same time followed by uh, stage number two. So vocabulary speculation. So uh, sometimes it's a good idea to ask students to speculate. Yes, think about vocabulary related to this topic. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so students uh, can brainstorm vocabulary, uh, maybe what possible terms they can be encountering during the article. Um, and at the same time, after, of course, speculation, we need to preteach. Yes, of course, they can't speculate all the vocabulary. Students match the words. In this case, we can uh, already prepare already a list of words, uh, maybe from uh, so uh, from potential potentially uh, with already uh, so uh, prepared definitions, and they will be maybe doing peer work and share with the elbow partners and report to the teacher in class. This is one of the activities which is related to the second stage, and these are the words mostly which are used from this article like economic turmoil recession fiscal year bottom line yeah and uh, with the definition I, I just I, I i i only showed you a couple a few words from this article and uh, once again another article uh, so uh, another stage which is now stage number three already reading so because we are dealing with them uh, so uh, so uh, article we need to uh, uh, so, um, so get students into active reading mode uh, but students first of all they can be asked to skim the text because you know sometimes not to frighten them that the text uh, should not be of course too uh, long they can be asked to skim the Turk for the main idea. Yes, maybe for two minutes and answer true and false questions around the text. Uh, in this case, uh, for the focus of the con so, uh, for the conservative government was made, etc. And students need to answer true and false based on textual information. And but of course, it should be only limited to general understanding, general comprehension. Again, another stage, which is number four, it's related to scanning the text. Again, it's actively reading stage, uh, and students are kindly asked to scan, uh, read for details, and search the specific information. And here we need to focus on business idiomatic expressions yeah and uh, these idiomatic expressions can be of course highlighted and they uh, can be activity which was designed by me this uh, this was some uh, some kind of asking students to choose the best meaning for each of the expressions from the text students are asked to look at the slide with a list of some idioms and phrases so, for example tips the budget crumbling economic outlook uh, forecast so projections relief measures yeah uh, or like a lift lockdowns yes there are lots of vocabulary related to pandemic lockdown and of course recession of a little bit too depressing yeah and then students uh, after another successive reading they were uh, kindly given uh, some numbers 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 because in business and economy we love these figured numbers mostly and they were kind of asked to go to the text to return and maybe tell us to what do these uh, numbers refer to. So this kind of kind of uh, makes them return to the text and uh, so do scanning. 
So stage number stage number five, this is the application follow-up stage, which is very important because in this stage, so our students are allowed to produce the language either in a um, so oral or like a speaking form, like a, this can be, of course, verbal and nonverbal. Students can use, of course, nonverbal signs when they are doing this in class, so in person during class and follow-up activities. And uh, here is a, my favorite uh, activity, even during the uh, business English class, this is a discussion. And discussion, uh, so during discussion, in, during this article, my students were asked to divide, to be divided according to three groups of government sector, NGO sector, yes, like a neutral party and public. But you know, no one uh, so allowed to be in the government sector, but still they were kindly asked. And they were kindly asked to answer the statement from, uh, from each stakeholder's viewpoint, yes? for the budget of Australian government we will survive after the pandemic. So it was very interesting uh, and discussion and which is all the time uh, interesting with students because uh, you, we, we all, all the time get engaged in animated and uh, discussion. And uh, at the same time, uh, during this fifth stage, we can also deal with the uh, correction and feedback. Students can be encouraged to review the article and vocabulary. And now it's high time to check their memory. Yes, by revising, by reviewing the article itself. And uh, students can be asked kindly to face articles and have a look. Uh, but of course, during online uh, articles, they were still peeping into the articles because uh, it's, uh, you, they can very easily uh, cheat. But of course, it's OK. Uh, the main thing is that uh, students can uh, some can be asked to supply the uh, so, so gap sentences with the vocabulary uh, so junks uh, so um, taken from the article and last and not least stage this is homework stage uh, but of course uh, without homework uh, it's impossible to uh, to provide retention of the uh, information retention of the vocabulary at the same time concepts uh, and uh, in, during this article i asked my student to read this article on similar topics May and maybe about uh, the country's economic pro profile, because when I was doing this in Kazakhstanian, this Kazakhstanian student, they were kindly asked to give me a picture about Kazakhstanian situation. Of course, in, in case of Georgia and in case of Turkey, I also received students from Turkey, Erasmus students during the business English class this term. It was, it's always interesting to hear uh, how students uh, present the country's situation, yes? So that's why I think that such kind of activities, once again, uh, so not only uh, teaches, uh, so in this case, we not, not only teach language, but of course, we uh, so, uh, kind of support them become critical thinkers, yes? Uh, so we are there, why are their subject matters? So uh, now let's, um, after discussing, um, uh, so, um, uh, so my experiences of uh, integrating business English uh, in business English classes, mostly uh, so written authentic materials. Uh, I would like also to kind of, may not worry for a long time, but to show you that uh, apart from written uh, authentic materials, it's always a good idea uh, to integrate audio visuals. And of course, uh, sometimes as, as I show you the websites, which are uh, which provide mostly audio, or audio you know, so, uh, resources, uh, but at the same time, I have one of my favorite resources. Uh, these are TED Talks. TED Talks. Uh, and why TED Talks? Uh, first of all, they kind of um, give students a very good stimulus, yes? How to speak fluently, how to make changes, how to influence people, how to actually uh, so, uh, so change life for better. And in our case, um, at the same time, this can be very good so, uh, so idea for the teachers to uh, save us when we don't have ready-made lesson plan, yeah? And uh, when we actually, sometimes it happens, we, we, we might have prepared, failed to prepare proper lesson plan. This can definitely um, uh, be a very valuable resource. And at the same time, it can even support uh, our students and uh, uh, to, um, uh, yeah, so to discuss a very interesting topic related to the business world and beyond. And so at the same, even most board students, even during pandemic and beyond, they can be very, very, very easily uh, get engaged in animated uh, discussions 
And uh, at the same time, um, because you know, everyone is kind of uh, tired from continuous dependence on course book. Well, that's why I once again, even I would like to highlight, it's very important for us educators, even university teachers to go beyond textbook. And one of the, even TED Talks can be used, even uh, not for the whole class, maybe at the end of class, uh, maybe in the during, uh, yeah, so during uh, reading stage. Uh, that's why we can even um, combine it with our learning and teaching materials. But of course, it's always good idea to be integrated into you know, ESP classroom. It doesn't matter whether it's a business, English, or any other subject matter. And once again, why you know, TED Talks? First of all, non-adapted talks, uh, they are designed and, and they respond to most recent problems and emerging ideas, innovative ideas in business, uh, in different uh, disciplines. Uh, apart from mastering target ESP language, uh, they also uh, kind of serve the purpose of improving students' presentation skills. Because when I was uh, kind of uh, uh, integrating this um, TED Talk cases in my business communication class, let's say five years ago, you know, I myself was so much, uh, so so much motivated to become a TED Talk speaker, and you know, it also helped me to maybe I'm not ideal presenter, but still, uh, when you have a good example. Apple, it always maybe motivates or drives you to perform better. That's why students can be uh, so very much uh, so, uh, so uh, kind of uh, so um, encouraged to develop their productive skills uh, and this can help them to hey hairs. And even when students say uh, sometimes when they are given project work, project based learning, and at the same time, project based learning involves presenting the project in, a, in, in the formal presentation. And in this case, my students are encouraged to uh, use all these uh, so skills and tricks uh, during TED Talks and uh, maybe we, to talk to the public and engage the public and with all these techniques uh, which are used by TED Talk speakers. And I think I talked once again too much, but still uh, one of my favorite TED Talks, but I think that I don't have uh, time to show it to you, maybe, uh, I, but this is a very important TED talk, but very, uh, one of the famous ones, how to improve our conversation. Uh, so uh, let me give you maybe one minute of this TED talk. Just one person that you avoid because you just don't want to talk to them. <laughs> you know, it used to be that in order to have a polite conversation, we just had to follow the advice of Henry Higgins and My Fair Lady, stick to the weather and your health. But. <laughs> These days, with climate change and anti-vaxxing, those subjects <laughs> are not safe either. So this world that we live in, this world in which every conversation has the potential to devolve into an argument where our politicians can't speak to one another and where even the most trivial of issues have someone fighting both passionately for it and against it, it's not normal. Pew Research did a study of 10,000 American adults, and they found that at this moment, we are more polarized, we are more divided than we ever have been in history. We're less likely to compromise, which means we're not listening to each other. Okay, so once again, I, I think that this talk is quite famous, but once again, it uh, once again highlights the importance of uh, verbal communication and kind of encourage uh, encourages students, of course, our young generation, who are too much dependent on uh, written communication, nonverbal communication, but which is also another subject of study by David Crystal, like intranet. Yes, it's the internet linguistic, but still, uh, I think in business communication, it's very important to once again show our students importance or in power of verbal communication, of fluent uh, so uh, communication for business and this 12 minute video can be very effectively used uh, uh, and uh, to uh, for communication real as well as online classroom at the same time we are speaker explores once again importance of face to face communication uh, over uh, so uh, over uh, so uh, so over virtual one yes and is uh, speaker demonstrates the, to the audience how to master oral communication skills. And believe me, this uh, video really just inspired and all the time when I integrated into my classroom, it, before, especially during when they have uh, to give oral presentation, they are doing their best in order to uh, make uh, as, uh, just uh, to become like a perfect presentation. So, uh, so students of business communication, when they cover the topic of uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages of oral and written communication, so can be involved in an animated discussion or preferred uh, of the 
way of communication and uh, in a business environment uh, through answering. So I, I already, I all the time, some kind of supply them with a ready-made follow-up questions and at the same time develop their oral communication skills while presenting justified answers on behalf of the representing group. So this was uh, my case of TED talk uh, of audiovisual authentic material in my classroom. And uh, I think that it's high time uh, to give you a kind of maybe my modest recommendation to today's uh, um, participants of today's uh, webinar that of course we should plan our classes with authentic materials, but of course uh, this means that we should go beyond uh, so, uh, so textbook. Uh, but of of course, textbooks can be a good idea. Nowadays, there are brilliant textbooks uh, like business pattern, but still, uh, it's always a good idea. And we should make our uh, business English classes and business communication as real life uh, so situation and as experience as possible through exposing our learners to the real, real world. And uh, it's very important, uh, once again, to devote our, our time and efforts uh, to selecting proper authentic materials, because sometimes uh, I myself am confused uh, as an instructor, and it should be responding to the time relevant issues and topics in the world of business. And it's of course a good idea to consult with more experienced colleagues, uh, members of the special interest groups and advise uh, us uh, uh, about uh, maybe resources and news articles and authentic stuff. And we should keep ourselves regularly updated with recent development in the field. field. And strive for our co continuous professional development when planning our business English classes. And of course, not only business, all classes and all situations. So to conclude our my today's uh, talk, uh, despite of the problems and challenges which, uh, which are faced uh, when, I, when we plan our classes uh, uh, in business English, we can always use and we can always count on authentic materials as these materials can become a very effective teaching resource when they are selected properly and controlled, and then when they have specific purpose in the end, at the end. And uh, um, finally, diversifying business English classes in the tertiary education and higher education, in my case, uh, um, as a, with a valuable, valuable teaching resources, uh, can lead our classes to increased uh, some engagement. At the same time, it can result in effective mastering of business English based on the resources used in a real world, true to the life situation, authentic news background. So this is my conclusion. And this is once again, my modest uh, advice to be, uh, to do business as usual, but be of course, always authentic. This is very important for us. Thank you very much for your attention. I really hope that you more or less uh, followed me, you enjoyed, and it was maybe too late for you and for me as well. It's 12, it's a mess, so it's already, uh, so uh, 11, 11, 50 in Georgia. And, but I am not tired, I really enjoyed it. I really hope that it was a little bit informative to you. Thank you. Uh, Tamari, I would like to thank you for your incredible patience. I'm really, awfully grateful to you that you have decided to conduct this webinar for us after all because of all the technical problems i was ready to die uh, so uh please uh, uh, my sincere apologies and hopefully in future our co cooperation will be equally fruitful i would like to thank you at this point for all three webinars conducted for IATF Poland. Two of them are available on Facebook and on YouTube. And this one will only be available on our uh, YouTube channel. And I have put this message in the chat box. So everybody will be able to go through these uh, many inspirational ideas, including me, yeah. <laughs> including thank myself. You. Thank you very much. And uh, we still have one webinar on the 29th uh, of uh, June, uh, um, we are going uh, to listen to Ron Mukeri telling us about the future of, of teaching English. So once again, Tamari, great, thank you. Yes, and all the participants. That is unbelievable how people are, how willing people are to listen to you because they waited yeah. over 20 minutes just to be in the webinar. And I am one of them. Apologies. Thank you and goodbye.
But Brian, can I finally share, share the results of the small poll? So actually, yes, yes, so yes, yes. They said during voting, majority of our participants, they voted both type of communication is more important in business, both written and oral. That's why we should, as business English teachers all the time, focus on both of these skills. So thank you very much for your uh, input, uh, my dear colleagues. And it was my pleasure to be meeting you once again. Hope to be meeting you in Poland and or in Georgia one day, dear Lucina. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. And let's wave goodbye. And we are leaving the, the meeting. See you soon, all of you, I hope. See you soon. Bye for now. Bye for now.